Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at another one of the mid-game battle cruisers, this time the Kaldari State Drake. Now in EVE Online, the Drake has become a bit of a meme. This used to be one of the most versatile and popular hulls in the game, and thus the question, can I bring my Drake, has become one of like those just typical EVE Online memes. This is kind of the equivalent of the Caracal as it used to be in EVE Echoes. Remember a time when everyone and their dog was flying a Caracal Navy issue because it was just by far the best ship in the game, both for PvE and PvP, and literally you'd sit outside Jita in one of those queues, and of the 200 ships sitting on the gate, about 180 of them would be Caracals of either the Trainer, Standard, or Navy Issue variety. Well anyway, the Drake is naturally a popular upgrade for people who have been using missile cruisers like the Caracal, so in today's video we're going to be looking at this ship, talking about how you first fly it, looking at fitting it, and how you can take it all the way up to tech level 10 and still do content. Now before we go any further, I just want to say that yes, I know, I'm talking about using a Drake for tech level 10 content, there are better ships for this, I do not chase a meta on this channel, I do not sit there and promote a meta. Better. There are ships that are going to be better, but I'm here to say I'm having fun doing this. Here's how you can too. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, if you want to bring your Drake, let me know by hitting like, subscribing to the channel, and dinging that notification bell. If you want to keep me doing what I'm doing and you fancy going the extra mile to help support the channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. You can pledge as little as £1 a month, um, and that will get you all kinds of bonuses, including like exclusive merchandise you can earn over time, and your name in the credits of a video. Um, beyond that as well, we do have a Redbubble merchandise store. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's jump right in today's video looking at the Kaldari Drake. The Drake is a battlecruiser found in the Kaldari State Ship Tree, so of course that's where we're going to head, straight into the Kaldari Ship Tree and looking at the battlecruiser lines. Now this one, curiously enough, does not exist at Tier 7. There is no Tech 7 Drake prototype or anything. We only get the Tech 8 Drake here. Now, as this line does continue, at tech level 9, we also get the Drake Logistics, so if you are into sort of shield logistics and sort of healing the fleet, then the Drake is an interesting line to go for that, and all the way up at tech level 10, we have the Drake Guardian, which is quite a popular battlecruiser-sized guardian ship. But anyway, for today, we're going to be focusing on the main tech level 8 Drake. Now, this is a bit of an unusual looking ship. Um, I've heard people liken this to a block of stripped off tree bark, and certainly I can see that. It looks a little bit like sort of a wooden shield um, or something, <laughs> but obviously it's a spaceship equipped with missiles floating through space. And I am hoping that one day at tech level 10 we get the Kaldari Navy Drake, just as I'm hoping we get the Republic Fleet Hurricane, the Imperial Navy, um, Imperial Navy Harbinger, and things like that. So here's hoping one day we get the Drake Navy issue, um, fingers crossed. Anyway, let's actually have a look at the Drake itself and what makes this ship pretty cool. So the fitting profile is standard for a ship of this tonnage and this tech level. We've got one drone tube, which we can happily ignore for the most part, because who really cares about 30 DPS? We then have seven high slots designed for missiles, three mid slots, decent amount of E-War there, it's typical for a tech level 8 ship, five low slots, and then three each of the combat and engineering rigs. It's a standard setup, it's basically the same as the other battle cruisers that you have at this tech level. Now the power grid is where things actually get really quite cool here. 733 megawatts is a lot of power grid, and if you've got enough levels in things like Battlecruiser Engineering just to push that up even higher, you can do some really cool stuff in regards to fitting this, as we'll see later. Cargo, 900 cubic meters, is pretty good for a ship this size, and its defenses these kind of lie to you. That 28,627 looks lower than some of the other battle cruisers you can get at this particular tech level and tonnage, but that's mainly because if you look at the structure and the armor, both of those are pathetically weak. But draw your attention across to the shield tank, where we have 10,305. This is the advantage of the Drake. It puts all of its eggs into the shield basket. And if you're focusing entirely on shield tanking, you don't care about about armor or structure. The aim is to just basically make sure that you never have your shield tank fail on you. 
And the Drake, as we'll see in a moment, is very, very good at this because it's got such a big shield tank, you can actually afford to sort of take a slow depletion on it as long as you know that eventually you're going to be able to then out heal the damage that you're taking. It means that early on in a wave, you might take a bit more damage than you can be boosting and repairing, but ultimately, as long as you kill enough ships before you hit armor that you can now have your heals take over, you will never touch your armor tank. The capacitor bank is also pretty strong here, 2363, with a maximum capacitor recharge rate of 10.82 gigajoules per second. It's a Kaldari ship, big shields, good capacitors. Obviously not quite as good as the Amar ships in Echoes as far as capacitance goes, but still pretty solid, and it's going to allow us to be effectively capacitor stable later, and I'll explain that later. The signature radius 245.7 is larger than other ships of this size. This is because it's a Kaldari ship. Those ships Shields come at the cost of signature radius, but having big shields means that you turn up on scanners, um, so you've got a high source radius as well, and your enemies' targeting systems are able to locate you easily because you have big, powerful shields lighting you up like a Christmas tree. Then we have a decent scan resolution, 202, slightly lower than other ones of this size, um, but again, it does the job, and we can ultimately rig for that later. Finally, 2.7 astronomical unit warp speed, followed by a flight velocity of 168, and a mass and inertia that kind of gives you a little bit of a slow and clunky ship. You get here basically the Drake being slower than some of the other battle cruisers, a bit more sort of ponderous. You kind of, this is one of those ships that you warp in at zero, and you're not not going to run around anywhere particularly quickly if you want to brawl with it. If you're going to snipe with it, then a micro warp drive is going to be a necessity and you'll probably still be caught due to a very high mass, a not overly great inertia modifier, and a very low flight velocity of 168. This is a slow, ponderous battle cruiser, I'm afraid. Once we go into its trait descriptions though, we can see the Drake's roll bonus, 25% increase to medium missile torpedo flight velocity, and can fit command bursts. Now that 25% increase to medium missile torpedo flight velocity is the equivalent of the Hurricane's 25% optimal and 25% um, fall off, plus the, like, you know, the Harbinger gets similar, the Ferox gets similar, it's a typical battle cruiser thing at this point in time. Unfortunately, however, this does not work out the same. If you were to look at, say, a Hurricane and the fact that it gets 25% optimal and 25% fall off, that is a bigger net gain than 25% flight velocity. This should have been 25% flight velocity and 25% fuel, uh, flight duration, flight time, however you want to call it in Echoes. Basically, this needed to be a double whammy or a bigger bonus overall. The Drake does not get as big an increase to its weapon systems as the other battle cruisers at this level. Now, in EVE Online, the Drake is quite often used as sort of a kiting or a semi-sniper. In Echoes, you're not really going to be able to pull that off unless you are heavily fitting for it with a lot of very particular low slots and using rigs, at which point your DPS is terrible, your alpha strike isn't particularly great either, and you're kind of forcing the ship to go against what it is. The best way to look at this, I feel, is that this is very much pushing to being a brawling battlecruiser, as we'll see later on. We then obviously have our two skill bonuses here, one from Advanced Medium Missile Torpedo Upgrade, if you've been training things like the Caracal and other missile ships um, in cruisers, you should have like Medium Missile trained up pretty high, but it is Upgrade, do bear that in mind. Um, you, for each level of that, you get a 12.5% increase to Medium Missile Torpedo Kinetic Damage and Thermal Damage. Note that that does not increase the explosive or the electromagnetic, that is therefore not a 12.5% DPS increase per level, that actually works out once you math this out, 12.5 um, times 5, then divide that by 2 because obviously you've got 4 damage profiles and you're only getting buffs to 2 of them. Basically this is about a 7% increase, a 6-7% increase per level to your total damage output. Um, I'm not sure why they've gone for it that way, especially since missiles don't really have that split and ultimately by going for kinetic and thermal it doesn't really do much 
anyway because you're not pushing heavily into the explosive damage or into the electromagnetic. Like if it was electromagnetic and thermal, then yes, you're suddenly going to have missiles much better against shields. If it was explosive and kinetic, then it would be much better against armor. But it's just kind of, a, it's not quite the 25% per level here that you're looking at. 25% times that by the five levels should be 75%. Ultimately, you're looking at about a 35%, well, 32.5% increase. Um, I think my math is terrible, so whatever half of 75 is, that's what you're actually getting as an increase there. Finally then, Battlecruiser Command is going to give you an increase of 4% shield resistance per level. Note that it is advanced medium missile, but only Battlecruiser Command, basic Battlecruiser Command, for 4% shield resistance per level, 20% additional shield resistance. Makes this surprisingly tanky. So, with all that said and done, let's look at fitting this. You folks know me by now, if there is an option to make a ship a brawler, I will go for it. I love that up close and personal playstyle, and actually the Drake does surprisingly well with this. It works really well as a brawler. It gets up into their grill, it punishes them with high firepower. This is a Tech 8 battlecruiser doing 1,335 DPS cold, and ultimately we can heat that even higher to nearly 1,500 DPS using the ballistic control unit. Little spoiler alert there ahead of time. This is also a remarkably cheap ship. The hull itself is around 150, 160 million. The fittings here are not particularly much either. And as you can see, I'm using a blue nano core. Yeah, this is a cheap ship that is readily available to do what you need it to do. And this is my PVE fitting for using a Drake. It does work in, uh, in, in sort of fleets as well or in PVP. Ultimately though, because if you're going into PvP, you need to be able to warp into zero, hit them hard and fast, and hopefully take them out quickly. It can work, it can definitely work in PvP, but you need to basically be able to land at zero on your target. And if you're going up against frigates, this will hold them back. Ultimately, if an interceptor does try to tackle you in this drake, you should be capable of hitting it as long as they're in range. That's the kind of addendum here. If you are going particularly after frigates, though, obviously swap the high slots here out for something like your rapid missile launchers, medium rapids. Ultimately, as you can see, the high slots have gone for a full brace of Pythum C-type medium torpedo launchers. These are dirt cheap on the market because nobody wants to use them. Goodness knows why. I love torpedo launchers. I think these are really, really good. Very high DPS, 185. Good damage spread. You can see we've got that boost to thermal and kinetic there, courtesy of the Drake's upgrades. Yeah, okay, its range is a little short at 14.85 kilometers, but ultimately we've got a pretty good sort of activation time here. They're, fi they're firing every five seconds for a good amount of damage. They also actually have better explosion velocity and explosion radius than medium missiles, so they do apply surprisingly well. Which means, yes, if someone jumps you in a frigate, you probably can hit them. As long as they're within that 1485 kilometer range, you should be able to actually take out interceptors with this, whilst also ripping through PvE anomalies on your own as well. This will quite comfortably take on Tech 10 medium anomalies with no questions asked. Um, you can go down to lower things like Tech 7 Inquisitor and Scout anomalies. This will push through those solo as well. And if you have a brawling fleet, well, yeah, again, this can work really well for some higher tier content as well because you are astonishingly tanky. Speaking of tanky, let's look at the low slots. Starting off a Pythum C-type large shield booster, going for a large because why not? If we can fit it in the power grid, we can activate it, get a big burst of shield hit points um, and just top ourselves up. Yes, it harms our capacitor stability, but as an example, if I were to unfit this from the ship, you can see that we are completely capacitor stable and actually, if I tap on the capacitor, completely capacitor stable without it, which means if you're not activating that large shield booster at all, then you are totally capacitor stable. It's only when you activate that, if you were to keep that shield booster running uh, like non-stop, two minutes, 40 seconds is all you're gonna get juiced out of this ship but we're never gonna have it running constantly because this heals 10% of your HP per activation. So you just tap it on and immediately turn it off. You wait until you've taken a bit more damage and your like, capacitor has recovered and you activate it again. 
We've also got two Pith C-type adaptive invulnerability fields, on top of the fact that the Drake has that native 20% bonus to its shield resistances, gives us some very high shield resistances, so we actually take a lot less damage than you might expect it to anyway. Big reduction to damage, plus the ability to heal any damage you do take in a single cycle. Yes, it looks like it's going to chew your capacitor, but it really doesn't. On the subject of Capacitor, I've gone for two Imperial Navy Medium Energy Nosferatus, and you may sit there and say, why have you only gone for Imperial Navy? But you've got the space in the power grid here to go for the full um, like Varicolacus here, so why Imperial Navy? Well, basically because I'm demonstrating this fit on the Fulmination Content Creator Test Server, where I have every single um, stat for a ship, at every single skill, at 555. Not many people train all the way to 555, and on my main character, my main battlecruiser character, Silent Rose, I've only got uh, battlecruiser engineering to 554, and cruiser engineering is at 554 as well. And the reason that's important is because at 554 and 555, cruiser engineering and battlecruiser engineering reduce the power grid requirement for your weapons. That's where the bonus power grid here has come from. So having 554 in cruiser and battlecruiser engineering on live means I can only fit Imperial Navy. To be able to fit anything larger, you're going to need power grid rigs, which are not really worth it, because quite frankly, an Imperial Navy is gonna get the job done. Um, or you're going to need to have battle cruiser engineering and cruiser engineering up at expert level five. If you have that skill, then awesome, go for it. And remember, you can use the, uh, the QR codes that I put at the start of this section to check this using the sweet fitting tool. Load your skills in there, and you'll be able to see whether or not you can put uh, commit to this fit with the skills that you have available and you can mess with it and see if you can improve it in some different ways as well. Now you might be wondering why we only have one Predator Stasis Weber Fire, and again it's because that's all we really need. As long as something's within the 148 kilometers of that Weber Fire, which coincidentally is also the 148 kilometer range of the missiles, then you should find that those torpedoes actually apply their damage pretty well, even against fast moving elite frigates. Yes, if you're going up against some of the fast ones that like to orbit at 20 kilometers, you're going to have to do some fancy footwork and slingshot maneuvers and things like that, but ultimately that's just single options there and they don't really come up all that much. Finally then, going back to the low slots, we have a Pythium C-type ballistic control system. You could go for a battery here if you're really worried. I've never had capacitor problems here. I'm happy to go with the control system for extra DPS and a medium afterburner. I always like to have some form of propulsion modifier on a ship, especially a battle cruiser or smaller, just to allow me to move quickly to and from where I need to be. Um, the fact that we can fit a C-type in here is pretty cool. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could drop the C-type using like the basic 554 engineering skills, drop the C-type down to something like a Republic fleet, and then you could increase the Nosferatus to Vrikalakus with the power grid that you freed up doing that. It's up to you. Looking at the rigs, rigs here I've splashed out on a Warhead Califaction Catalyst and a Bay Loading Accelerator to get that extra DPS so that we can get faster clear times in PvE, along with a Core Defense Charge Economizer. This is Shield Boost Amount Bonus, which means that when we activate that large Shield Booster, you can see we are getting 1,188 out of it. That is a big heal every time we activate. For the engineering rigs though, standard setup of semiconductor memory cell and capacitor control circuit, both at level 3 just to help us keep the capacitor going as best we can, then this is kind of your wild card slot. If you really want to upgrade like the meta level of certain modules, this could be a power grid rig, you could go for auxiliary thrusters, you could go for dynamic uh, engine housing, polycarb uh, polycarbon engine housing or dynamic fuel valve, things like that. I go for the targeting system subcontroller because Kaldari ships have slightly lower um, like targeting, lock-on, scan resolution um, than other battle cruisers, so the targeting system subcontroller just helps us log on that little bit faster. Finally then, the nano core. As I said, I wanted to keep this fit cheap, so the nano core I've gone for is just a Gurustas veteran core, readily available on the market, nice and easily to, uh, easy to make with reverse engineering. It's cheap, and if you were to go onto the Concord store, Concord Pass, you'll find that any of the nano cores you can get for the Drake there are actually better than this one, so I'm showcasing this with something that's actually not very good, just so that you can go, well actually, the nano core that I've got available now, whether it's the Clear Skies or the Ascension or whatever, is actually 
going to be much better than this. 14.4% missile torpedo damage. Ultimately, what you want to be looking at is anything that's going to increase your torpedo damage and its application, or anything that increases your shield. The Drake is a very tanky ship. Those are the stats you want to look for. Lean heavily into its shield, lean into its torpedoes, and you can't really go wrong. Well, it's all very well and good me talking about this and showcasing the fit. Let's actually jump into a combat encounter and show it working. Because of the Drake's similarities to the Harbinger and Hurricane, which I've also covered recently, links in the description, I ultimately wanted to showcase this in the same kind of encounter, so I've only gone into an Angel 10 small just to demonstrate this so you can clearly see it side by side, how it handles it compared to those two ships which we've already covered. But do note that mediums are not at all a problem for this ship due to how tanky it is and how much damage it can actually kick out. It can kick out more damage than either of those ships and it is tankier than those as well. Anyway, Angel 10, small anomaly. We're coming to the end of wave three here. You can see I'm comfortably sitting at 77% capacitor, 92% shields. There have been no worries at all. This has just been literally lock onto everything, pick the biggest target, orbit it, and put the Nosferatus on, and then just blow everything else up as long as it's within 14.5k. Sometimes I do have to move and sort of relocate around a different target that's just outside of my torpedo range, but ultimately it's not an issue. Now here you can see I've taken a bit of damage, we're down to 83% on the shields, capacitors are 82%, 79% shields, gonna activate that booster once, suddenly there we are, back up at nearly 90%, the shields just, yeah, they're quite Quite comfortable. The capacitor does drop, uh, drop down a little bit every time we activate. You'll notice the Gist Typhoon there is currently being my blood bag with the Nosferatu. Um, the capacitor is dropping down, but the shields are staying quite comfortable. I can turn the shield booster off, let the capacitor recharge, and then just take a little bit of damage on the shields. It's no problem at all. I don't think I drop anywhere below sort of like 80%. I think I barely hit 79-78% um, throughout this entire encounter, and part of that's just me not paying attention. Ultimately though, you'll see even here like the Gistum Stab has gone down, uh, the Hounds and the Explorers have gone down quickly, the Gistum Stabber here, we're doing good damage to it with those torpedoes. Ultimately, it's just Orbit and Blast. This kind of reminds me a little bit of playing my Typhoon 2, but just obviously a smaller ship that's a lot cheaper to build, a lot cheaper to skill into, and it is more than comfortable doing Tech 10 encounters. Again, it's not going to do this as quickly as something like an Apocalypse Striker will, but it'll do it much cheaper, and I find it a lot more fun. I find it more fun doing stuff like this, because I actually have to be present. I have to actually occasionally change my orbits to a different target, and I occasionally have to activate the shield booster. I don't like AFK ratting. Yes, it's faster and it's easier, but it's a lot less fun. I find it boring and to me that just means it's not interesting. I play this game because I want to have fun, not because I just want to make copious amounts of isk in as short a time as possible. That's what a job's for. To me that feels like the definition of a job and if I find that the game that I'm playing feels like a job, I don't really want to play it anymore, which is ironic because Eve Echoes literally is my job, but you get where I'm coming from I hope. Ultimately, this should be demonstrating quite comfortably though how easy this is to do in the Drake, and going through Tech 10 mediums, as I said, not a problem. Obviously this is Angel, so they're doing mainly explosive, thermal, and a little bit of kinetic. If you're going up against like Sancha or Blood Raider, you will find that things are still just as easy, because simply put, your shield booster deals with it comfortably, your Nosferatus are going to drain the things nice and easy. It's... It's not a problem. The Drake really handles this kind of content really quite comfortably. Here we are, end of wave four, currently going at the Gist Typhoon. If this wasn't on fulmination for the demonstration, I would just be looting everything as I go as well, because it's, you know, all right there. All the you know, wreckage is within 10Ks of when I blow a ship up. I'm right there to loot it um, and just enjoy that. Could you put an auto salvager on here? Yeah, you probably could. Um, you could get away with that, I think, because the web doesn't really get used much in PvE. If you're just going through sort of like tech, uh, smalls and mediums, not doing special anomalies, you could probably swap the web for something like a auto salvager. Um, I think you'd probably need to either have good skills in them though, or at least the sort of the, the Galente or Or variants, the ones that are at least 10 kilometer range. You need to really have that 
If you can get it to 15 kilometer range, then every single ship you destroy is going to be auto looted for the simple fact that you have got 15 kilometer range. So there is that. You could swap that web for an auto salvager um, and enjoy just instantly looting everything as you go too. And it's not going to affect your capacitor. That web doesn't really do all that much in standard anomalies. It's mainly there for specials and things like that. But anyway, folks, that is everything I need to say here about the Drake. This is a really cool, it's a really popular ship, and I think I've seen it wane in its popularity a bit. I think I saw a lot of people enjoying flying the Drake when they were tech level 8 when they first got it, but then when tech level 9 comes along, you want to go for the new shiny thing, and there isn't another Drake at tech level 9 that's, you know, for combat, you get the Drake uh, Guardian, uh, Logistics, sorry, at tech level 9. So ultimately, I think a lot of people drop this ship, forget that it exists, and look at that explosion. Really pretty explosion there, though I think, yeah, there we are. It drops and sort of moves to the side because lag, but ultimately, I love the Drake. If you enjoy the Drake, here's proof that you can use it at tech level 10. Get back into flying a ship that you enjoy flying, stop chasing meta, start having fun. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, folks. I love talking to you guys about what your favorite ships are, how you enjoy the ships that I'm showcasing, etc. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!